From Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering RSA Conference 2017. Now, here's your host, John Furrier. Hello, welcome everyone to the special live CUBE coverage here in, inside our studio in Palo Alto. We've been at RSA Conference in San Francisco for the past two days, scouring the landscape. Myself and Jeff Frick was up there doing interviews on the ground. Again, huge crowd. We couldn't bring the CUBE there this year, so we're going to do a live in-studio wrap-up today, all day today, wall-to-wall -to -wall coverage. And our first guest is Darius Goodall, who's the Director of Security Products at Barracuda, Barracuda Networks. Uh, well known, I mean, they've been doing you know, uh, security as an appliance when they first started the company. Now they're super successful and grown from the spam, anti-spam uh, virus firewall back in the day to full-blown uh, security portfolio. And the threat detections in the whole landscape has completely changed. Obviously, RSA this year. Darius, comment on on the fire. first. Welcome to our, our yeah. Thanks, thanks for having us, John. I um, appreciate it. It's been a dark vibe there, and honestly, and 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 by the way, I kind of love the whole cyber thing personally as a geek because you know it's, it is a digital world now, and there is cyber warfare going on. There are threats that are global, and you know we were staying on the cube. Not a last show. Where's the cyber West Point? You know, and so you know the younger kids coming up into the, into the into the industry are all now living, you know, spear phishing, phishing, every kind of attack you can imagine. So That's right. it just seems that the diversity of attacks is grown, and there's more tactics: good guys, bad guys, white guys, dark web. I mean, what's you know? The That's right. You're, exa you're exactly right, and that's a really good question. Where is the cyber West Point? I'd like to love to see that as a university come out in the future as well. That would be that would be awesome. But but yeah, it, it's, it's unrelenting, right? It's absolutely unrelenting. Um, the number of attacks that we're seeing with our broad threat intelligence that we have is is just crazy. I mean, one of the what, I was talking to Michael Osterman, actually industry analyst, uh, a, a while ago, and he's uh, he's predicting that we're seeing uh, just in ransomware alone. 200 new variants a quarter, at the very least, and there's no sign of, there's no sign of abating uh, well up into 2020. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely following, like you say, you know, the, the, the threats, they're changing uh, as time goes on, the landscape changes, these guys are just moving with uh, supply and demand, right? Ransomware is one of those things where it's just, it's so coordinated. Talk about some of the threats, because I want to get into some of the things that you guys are doing as a company. I think it's important to highlight as this changes, but talk about some of the, the key things that are happening. What are the top security threats in your mind that you see out there? Because ransomware is one of those things where it's kind of an embarrassing thing, so you don't really kind of hear about it. It's one of those <laughs> things where it's also coordinated so that the, the attackers know who they're going after and That's know right. how to get the leverage, whether it's a hotel you know, well, or... Well, you're, you're or, right. You're right. I mean, it's, uh, some of it's coordinated. Some of it's very coordinated and starts with the spear phishing campaigns and so on, and, and obviously comes to the less coordinated, um, you know, in the, in the phishing campaigns that to, to, to boot as well. But um, I've seen some very interesting uh, occurrences over time. Just like you say, we've heard we've heard of the I ICUs at the hospitals being locked up. We've heard libraries. We've heard of. Um, hotels with the electronic key card systems being disabled and so on. It's all very disruptive, all, all pretty nasty stuff. Um, but we're starting to see some strange, strange uh, strains coming out as well. I mean, one that I saw come out in November was a new strain called Ranscap. It looks like ransomware, it feels like ransomware. Um, it asks you money in Bitcoin and for ransomware as well, but at the end of the day, and actually what it does is destroy your files. So you're going to make that one easy payment on their payment plan. Um, and you're going to get exactly nothing back for it. So uh, the motto of the story, the it's moral of the story. It's fake ransomware. That's right, it's, it's fake. It's like fake news, it's fake ransomware, it's, it's everything. Right, it's Ranscam. I mean, it's, it's, uh, there's no honor amongst thieves now. They're just yeah. ruining it for themselves, right? Yeah. Uh, but we like that. Let them come over, let them uh, spend more of their investment, actually, or yeah. invest more, I should say, actually. My friend Bill Tai, who's a uh, former venture capitalist, big kite surfer, mm -hmm. you know, he's big into Bitcoin, and he just got his two-factor authentication uh, right. nailed, so you know, two-factor, you get your phone, you get your SMS message. Now they're hacking the phone, so now that's, right. that's at risk. That's right. So what is the prospect? I'm a, you know, I mean, my liberties are being you know, at risk here as a, as a user, as a consumer. You know, if two-factor authentication is not going to work, if right. the phone's going to get hacked, and certainly emails can be compromised, I'm just assuming my email's compromised these days, but what's next? How do I, as a user, and as a company, or a consumer of a company, get secured. It's, it's, it's a big challenge. It's a big challenge. And this is, this is something that we talk about on a daily basis, is you have to secure from all of the threats, right? And so it's no longer about having um, the, the old legacy systems. We hear companies all the time saying, it's our legacy tools. They're not doing the job. They're just not cutting it anymore, right? So they're always looking for the, for the latest things. So the advanced threat detection, the advanced threat protection that is live up to date, and distributes all of that information across all the threat vectors. Just like you say, now we're getting another one, which is talking more, what you mentioned was more about endpoint protection, specifically around mobile devices. So yeah, that's another challenge. 
um, that's going to be another area of the market. That well, you mentioned the, the attack vectors. Some people also say surface area right. attacks, right. which now with uh, uh, the way the web is digital, there's no, there's, there's unlimited doors to enter. It used to be that's front right. door, back door. You lock it up, you secure it, you have a moat, and that's the perimeter. That's secure, right. everything's good, VPN in. That's gone. Everyone kind of much validates that. So what what is the 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 challenge now because I was just talking with my son as I was driving to school, we were talking about how Teslas are being hacked, right. cars are being hacked. So IoT, Internet of Things, IoT. opens exactly. up this and everyone says, oh, AI is going to cure all. But the reality is, is that it isn't. So is it, is the answer, first of all, one, talk about the surface area of attacks, and two, is the answer data sharing, is the answer open source? Because some are saying, if you have open source, the collective intelligence of everyone yeah. could be the answer. What's the current state well, of the so, market? So, so from a Barracuda perspective on the, 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 the threat intelligence, we collect our threat intelligence from numerous different places, and that's, that's absolutely critical. You can't just have a single point source. Um, but then uh, leading, uh, and some of that is open source stuff, getting, it, getting that information from open source, uh, open source places. Of course, that's critical as well. That adds to your, your threat, uh, threat intelligence. Um, but aside from that, like I said, it's one thing for, uh, for, for you to understand or see an attack come in on a specific threat vector. It's then how do you leverage that information? How do you make that information available across all the other threat vectors? Mm -hmm. So for example, ransomware, it, it, there's no question, 70% of ransomware gets deployed over email. Right? Mm -hmm. Whether you pick it up on your cell phone device or your laptop or your desktop, whatever, it really doesn't matter, right? Um, but what we see then is that as soon as we detect a, a piece of ransomware that comes in on uh, that threat vector, what we need to do is make sure that that information is available right across all the other threat vectors. So these guys are planting the same piece of ransomware out on a web, uh, out on a website, they're waiting for some unscrupulous mm -hmm. user to come in and download it, right? In which case, endpoint protection might not necessarily help you there. You then need to, uh, to, to be able to thwart that kind of attack in a web download, so a web gateway, a secure web gate, gateway, and be able to take that information and upload it to your ATD stack and what have you to make mm -hmm. sure that that's cleansed. But you don't want it to keep on going up to the sandbox every single time, right? Yeah. That's the point, because that's, a, that's not the great user experience. Nobody wants to wait for that download. Mm -hmm. You want to use your threat intelligence saying, hey, I already saw this in my email threat vector, or whatever other You want to be more vector. efficient, obviously. Exactly, and it's exactly. The coordination amongst the data and, and the exactly. endpoints to the, to the back end. All right, so talk about the ransomware, because this is really interesting, because ransomware is an obvious example, and that people can get a mental model around that. The timing's impeccable. It's kind of like the old, when I didn't pay my bills in college, That's the lights right. get turned off. It's like, I need the lights now. <laughs> they know exactly when to turn off everything, so you have to pay more. But what are the use cases, I mean, and, what are, and what do customers do? How do they protect it? What's the, take us through the, the day in the life of, hey, I, don't, I have a ransomware potential problem. Do I uh, deploy a certain way? Do That's I right. lock down certain <clears throat> assets? What do I do? What's the what's the playbook? So there's so, so the playbook the, the playbook is 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 relatively clear from from our perspective. We actually put this down into three very distinct buckets, right? So there's the detect category, there's a prevent category, and there's a recovery category, right? So on the detect category, this is all about uh, making sure that your your infrastructure, um, be it your email servers, your web servers, and all that kind of stuff, they're all secure. Right? Um, the email servers specifically, if you're doing a migration to Office 365, you need to make sure that those emails that are being migrated with them mm -hmm. aren't taking all that existing ransomware, malware, and, and, and viruses all across to your new infrastructure. Because now you're just waiting for somebody to go back into an old email, double click, mm -hmm. double click on it, and boom, yeah. you're done, right? So first stage is to take care of that, clean house there. The other thing is as well, it goes across all the other threat vectors as well. Make sure that your web infrastructure, uh, we're looking at web hacks, we're looking at people uploading uh, files to companies like monster.com or what have you. Are they uploading malicious content or is it genuinely a resume, right, for example? Yeah. Um, so you've got to make sure that those environments are, 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 are secure and so detect any of the vulnerabilities associated with your web. Then you move over to the uh, prevention category and that is exactly what we've been saying. Apply advanced threat detection, across all the uh, attack surfaces, whether it's uh, email, whether it's web, whether it's uh, you know, um, network perimeter and so on. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you've got an advanced threat detection uh, program to actually cover all of those as well. Yeah, and I want to put you on the spot for a second uh, yeah. and, and, and put you in the hot seat because this is, first of all, everyone knows Barracuda, for the folks probably that, that know you. You got great products, you have enterprise presence. That's you right. guys do a great job of security. Again, your DNA is from your first product and you guys done a great job and so I've been following you guys there. The question that comes up is, 
you know, IoT, I mentioned the surface area, it could be yeah. air conditioning to Tesla cars, it's all these new attack vector points that you mentioned. But ultimately, the big topic is cloud. Where are you guys at with cloud? Because at the end of the That's day, right. it's cloud, cloud, <coughs> cloud. Cloud also complicates and exasperates the threats. That's right. That's right. So Amazon's done a good job with security, Azure's out there, but I'm a customer, I might want to play in multiple clouds. So these are the things that are on the minds of the buyers right now. How do you help those customers? That's exactly, that's exactly right, and very good question, John. So um, migration to cloud is definitely a, a, an area for concern, and quite rightly so, because it just breaks up your network perimeter, it breaks up all your application perimeter and so on, right? So uh, the rules still apply over here. As you migrate out into the cloud, um, the AWS's and the Azure's of the world, of course, they make their infrastructure secure. That's good for them. That's good for them. It does essentially nothing for you. If you put an application up there, it's like sticking it out on the cloud, right? It's sticking it out on the public internet. It's exposed. So what you then have to do is then... So essentially it's on them that's to make right. sure it's secure. Amazon is secure, that's right. but that's they, right. you, you have to take advantage of their stuff, which might change, again, more the dynamics. Exactly. So it's on the customer to secure in the cloud. So you, essentially what you've done is you've opened up, you perceive it as you've opened up a hole in your network perimeter. Now you need to close it up again. So you've just moved your assets up into the cloud. The first thing you're going to do is go deploy a cloud, uh, a cloud instance of a firewall up there. Right? So that's one thing. But then making sure that you can get to those assets securely is also equally important. So making sure you have the VPN, the encryption, uh, and the, the, the traffic prioritization and, and capabilities for that to get you access to your data up in the cloud, that's critically important How do you, What do you well. guys do specifically for the customers? So we, so we, what products do you Yeah, we you? push. We is push it easy? Our, I mean, is it push button report, like yeah. the provisioning? So it, it is, it is, right? So we have our, our, our well-known NGF products that are now, uh, which are well-established either as IoT devices to, to secure the IT, IoT framework, but more pr uh, specifically as your network perimeter. We've taken that uh, version because it's x86 based and we've created uh, versions available for Azure and AWS. So it's exactly the same. Is that the cloud ready case. program? That's it, well, the cloud ready program uh, feeds into this. But the firewall experience is exactly the same. You're just moving your perimeter out. So the cloud, fi the, the fi um, the cloud ready program is, uh, is just uh, to address this and promote this. We're seeing a lot of customers starting to move out to the cloud. And of course, what we want to do is enable them. So we've got a promotion out there that allows them to uh, secure the network perimeter, but we'll give them free 90-day uh, uh, licenses for Azure and AWS to help move them up there. So it's it accelerates their... That's right. So, you're, so I get this right. Your model is, okay, if you have an endpoint on Barracuda, you're extending them with a clear path to the cloud That's right. in things that they understand, the Barracuda in the and the interfaces and whatnot. Yep. And exactly, and and for, for for newer customers who are looking to to, so it's to not make a their major shift well. for your customers. No, no, not at all. Okay. But uh, for somebody moving out into the cloud, you know, where where you know we're the leader out there in the cloud space for the in mm -hmm. the in the firewall arena, um, and uh, you know we've got very good traction. Business is good for you guys. That's Security's right. hot. I mean, what's the bottom line of the show? What's your takeaway? First two days. Now we're on the third day. What's the total vibe? You get to summarize the show. I want to. I want to. I want to talk about the. You know, I would say it's still around the, about the threats, the dark web. Just like you opened yeah. up the conversation, right? I mean. It, it really is around that, um, and and keeping up with that, keeping up with what's going on out there. That's yeah. a, that's a fascinating spot. And for me. And, and all the noise out there for customers that are, are are being bombarded, and and the first wave of security, and I would say in this kind of unsecureless perimeter mark, market, customers were buying everything in sight. Oh, security guy, that's oh, right. Give me some of that. So that sprawl of buying security products is out there, and they're still pretty much they'll kick any solution. Most customers will. That's right. But what's the, but now the challenge is how they got to really start building stuff. What's your advice to uh, enterprises out there that have bought everything and now got to start narrowing down on a straight and narrow on solutions. Yeah, uh, you know what? Uh, take a step back. My, my advice is take a step back and analyze your, your, your threat uh, exposure, right? Uh, and really understand that before you start diving into buying products, okay? Um, the nice thing about Barracuda uh, is, is simply that we are a portfolio company and we'll give you that visibility right across the entire threat, uh, threat surface. Um, and manageability as well. So that's, you know, those kind of things are, uh, are so critical. So you got the tactical solution deploy, and then yep. you got the data model behind it to, to back it up. That's right. So you're, are you for this whole notion of data sharing amongst vendors? I, I think we have to. Yeah, I think we have to. Barracuda's absolutely up in there. We've got to, we've got to share that inter, uh, threat intelligence. We've got to get that single source of truth going. That's absolutely critical. All right, Darce, thanks for coming into the studio. Really Pleasure. appreciate it. I know you're heading up to San Francisco. We are here live in Palo Alto for our coverage of RSA in studio. We had a lot of guests lined up. Stay with us all day. Darce is going to shoot up to San Francisco and, and uh, to the show. Well, Jeff Frick and I'll be we'll attending some of the parties. I think we're going to be schmoozing people late night up in, up in San Francisco. So we'll be right back with more coverage after this short break. <laughs>